Okay, tonight we're going to talk about the seven things that are opened in the book of Revelation. I'll repeat it again. The seven things that are opened in the book of Revelation. It's very important, the sequence. So hang on to it and play cl- pay close attention. First, we're going to go to the book of Luke, chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 19. And the angel answered, answering, said unto him, this would be Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb. You're not going to be able to open your mouth. Do you know why? You want to remember this. If God, his, his elect must be prepared to allow the Holy Spirit to speak. You will be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So there you have it. Always when you know better, then don't turn your back on God. Don't be a disbeliever. He doesn't like it. Now, skip on to, the, to verse uh, 64. John the Baptist is born. And he wrote a note saying, call him John. What we're doing here is Zacharias is about to make a prophecy from the Holy Spirit. And he basically tells you the seven things that are open. It is amazing how our Father works. In the word. So let's read it. Verse 64. And his mouth, this was after the birth, and his mouth was opened immediately. And his tongue loosed. And he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. That word traveled fast. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Verse 67, here's why we came here. And his father, Zacharias, Zacharias in the Hebrew tongue means remembered, by Yah. So certainly this man was remembered by the living God. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, This prophecy is very important. Again, it leads to the seven things open in the book of Revelation. And, and he prophesied, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited, underlined visited in your mind, and redeemed his people. 69, and hath raised up an horn of salvation. That would be through the Son, of course. For, for us in the house of his servant David. And as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. How long, how long have they been there? How long has God provided us prophets since the world began? There's no need in anyone being left out as long as you will study the prophets when it's truly one speaking with the Holy Spirit. Then we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us. Let that comfort you. That prophecy still stands to this day. When you love the Lord and you follow Him, you're His child. Number one, He's given you power over all your enemies. Now, you don't want to be a wimp, do you? No, you use it. 
But when you've done all you can, he's going to step in. He's your father. Verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. That's to remember his contract. You should remember it. Who did he make it to? Um, Verse 73, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. What was that oath? That he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in reverence and without fear. You don't have to worry about it. This is why, you know, for a Christian to doubt a promise of God is weak. Okay. If God makes the promise, you claim it. You live it. You talk to him and you expect it. Okay. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. And John the Baptist was. He was the last prophet before Christ. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. And he did. He was that voice crying from the wilderness uh, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Oh, he was good at it. They came from miles down to the ford on the Jordan to be baptized. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. This word day spring in the Hebrew is amach, which means the branch. And that branch, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And John the Baptist being the forerunner thereof to announce the coming. And how precious it is that his father gave this prophecy, even at once having refused to speak and believe. And he being a priest himself of the course of Abaya, he refused. And he was struck dumb because of it. Don't mess with God. Listen to Him. Love Him. Trust Him. And you'll do just fine. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Now the seven things that are opened in the book of Revelation and the sequence in which they come is very important to you. It lets you know what God wants you to have foremost on your mind. The word revelation itself means to open. It means to unveil. You're supposed to understand the book of Revelation. So let's add this stepping stone of the seven things open, the sequence And their importance. Go with me to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And you're fortunate tonight. We're going to stay in the book of Revelation now. (laughs) You're home there, okay? We're going to open it up. Let's go to the first opening. What was it? Chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a thunder talking with me. That's the voice of God. Which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. You know, that's what we're interested in. That door was opened. And John was told to walk in. Why? To show us things that will happen before that day of the Lord. If you go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, you find out that this happens on the day of the Lord, which means the millennium, a thousand year period. He said, I'm going to tell you what's going to transpire so you're not anxious about it. 
Verse 2, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Verse 3, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper or a sword iron or a stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. It was the real thing. It wasn't the fake imitation that later will come. This was your father and the very kind of glory that ringed that throne that brought forth the fact, this is our father. Verse 4, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Those are the same 24 that prophesied in the lecture today, this morning early. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. If you want to know what those spirits are, it's a little, little takes away from it, but not necessarily. You'll find them in chapter 5, verse 12. The seven spirits of God, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, one, and riches, two, wisdom, three, strength, four, honor, five, glory, six, and blessings, of course, seven. Now, now go with me to chapter 6, verse 1. I want you to stop and think a moment. He has opened the door to heaven. What is the first thing he's going to tell us? Would you say the first thing is probably one of the most important? Absolutely. Naturally. The first thing, the first door opened is very important to us. And we find that door opened in chapter 6, verse 1. This is the second door. But the first opened after heaven. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts, the living creatures, saying, Come and see. I want you to look at this. I want you to absorb it. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. This crown is toxon in the Greek tongue. It means a cheap imitation fabric. It's the Antichrist. So now, now think a moment in sequence. What is the most important thing the Father wanted you to know in the opening series? The Antichrist is coming. And he's going to be riding on a white horse, but didn't we understand Christ would also? No, that's why he's the Antichrist. And that's why it is ever important that you know and understand that. That God put it number two, the first after opening the door to heaven, that you know who this one was and from whence he would come. Now, what would number three be? Well, I don't know. Let's go to nine, chapter nine, verse two, and and we'll find out. Chapter nine. Let's read verse 1 first. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from, from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. What was open third? And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So what was this third one? Again, it's the coming of the Antichrist. 
He does not wish you to be deceived. He's jealous. He loves you. And he doesn't want you hanging around with a fake. He wants you to be brighter than that. He wants you to be touched by the Holy Spirit. That you can recognize a phony when you see one. Because, beloved, there are a lot of phonies in this world. Verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Verse 4. Listen carefully. What does he do about his children? And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. But wait, that's what locusts eat. Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Why? He's not going to let them touch you. Why? Because you have the seal of God in your forehead. You understand the openings in heaven. You understand what it is God would have you know with understanding. The importance and the sequence of events whereby you're not deceived. And verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. You all know what that means. Turns your backbone to mush. Verse 6, And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. You know, you might say, well, how, how, why would someone seek death? How would you like to be a church member that sit on a church pew all your life, loving the Lord, but never being really taught the Word? I mean, you're genuine. You love Him. And then to find out that you've been in the sack with Satan, the Antichrist, that you turned your back on the one you really love, the Lord Jesus Christ. You're too ashamed to face Him. And you would pray for death because you would be too ashamed to, to walk in the presence of this Holy One. Verse 7, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared into battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. Those crowns are turbans, as you well know. And their faces were as the faces of men. Well, how, how could that be? Because they were men. The men of the world. And, but Antichrist will use whomever he can. And boy, has he got a lot of people for religious reasons that do things that are straight out of the pits of hell. His children blowing themselves up. Things that, that that's, you know, that's totally out of the realm of reason, of love, of God. But there you have it. Antichrist will use whomever he chooses. Remember the sequence. That was number three. Both of those were concerning the false messiah. Now, let's go to a chapter we were at this morning. Let's go to 11, chapter 11, verse 19. Verse 19 reads, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of the, his testament. This is what Zacharias was talking about, the covenant. And there were lightnings, and voices, thunders, and an earthquake, and great hail. How precious it is that our Father provides us. That what is open there? The testimony. God's Word. If you look at it, calmly with understanding, absorbing it. What the Spirit would say to you, keeping things in order, everything in its own priority, to know who the true Christ is, 
it's not that difficult in what the fraud is. You can tell a fraud today when you see one. It's re- well, how do I know? They don't align with God's word after you've made a, a simple study. Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead to chapter 15, verse 5. Same subject, chapter 15, verse 5. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. That's number five. It's opening up when you search and when you seek and when you pray for knowledge and guidance. Father will always give it to you. Why? Well, it's simple. He loves you. Why? I don't know. (laughs) But I do know. He loves you because you're you. Because you care. I just wanted to see if you were awake, okay, <laughs> out there, all right. But he loves you, and he does care, and he wants you to absorb his word. Don't be like Zacharias and say, well, I know him, but I just don't quite, he's, you're dumb. You know, you don't want God to say that to you. That's not, not where you want to go, okay. But that one was open, and that is the fifth one. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues clothed in pure white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God. He's about to move. He's going to, beloved, who lived forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels was fulfilled. And of course, what that has to do with is, is the fact that, um, that um, He, our Heavenly Father, He wants you to see the truth. And the temple will be closed white. Those that are in the wrong side of the book are going to be educated through the millennium. That's what it is closed. If by the time the vials start being poured, pretty well, if, if you haven't been convinced, you're, you've almost waited one day too late, just like they did at Kadesh Barnier. Okay, now, let's go to 1911. To see what number six might be. 1911. This is one of the most important openings. It separates Christians from non-Christians. Verse 11, chapter 19, the great book of Revelation. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. Well, my goodness, we saw that back in 6-1, didn't we? Yes, we did. But don't you ever think it's the same white horse? It isn't. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. He's not coming to be crucified. He's coming to make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and his head was were, on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Verse 13, And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That's his name. Do you know it? Do you know the Word of God? I mean, the Word of God became flesh and walked among us. The same rider of this white horse. And do you know something? He was, it was spoken of long ago in the Old Testament. In Zechariah chapter 9, 9, it says he's going to come riding lowly on an ass or the colt of an ass. Never ridden before. But in verse 10, he comes on a white stallion to conquer the second advent. And that's what we're just about to approach 
we're getting close. That's why we have to take these ABCs of the 6th, 7th, and the, the remainders of the 5th and study them with understanding to keep the sequence in order. When it happens, it's going to happen fast. But you will recognize it. Why? Because you studied the Word. You know the man on the white horse. It's the Word of God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, He loves you. Verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed Him up on white horses. He's not going to be alone. He's bringing a lot of your families with him. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. They're pure. And they're ready to cleanse this earth to assist God's saints in doing that. The elect that are here. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he as he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's who he is. Can you imagine that he, the only begotten, the word of God, leads you? He wants you. He wants you to love him because he certainly loves you. He has a plan. And this is how you understand his plan. is by looking at the sequence of these end times. You know, the prophets even wanted to live where you're living today. They wanted to witness this. And before your very eyes, it's happening. It's happening all over the world. Wake up. Observe it. Have the sequence straight. God said to you, the most important thing, don't you be sucker baited. Don't, don't you be taken in by the false one. Beloved, you know something? A lot of people that call themselves Christians are going to think he is come to fly them away. That, that is sad. I get no pleasure from that. That's why we must do our best to see that the truth prevails. And we drag as many as we can out of the filthy hands of Satan. And that is the sequence of things up to the up to this particular one. And uh, and so it is that uh, as that great name. To conclude this lecture, a little short, but that's the end of it. I, I was taught as a young minister as When you have explained the four W's, what, when, where, and what, why, sit down. Shut up. You got it done. So that's what we're about to do here now. We're going to do the seventh one. Go with me to the 20th chapter, the 10th verse. Chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil deceived them that was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night and forever and ever. They're blotted out. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Time ends. And here comes your seventh. The seventh opening in the book of Revelation. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Not their faith, 
their works. Do you know, after him going overboard to warn you about the false Christ, if your works are to worship him, do you think he wants you? Do you think Christ would want you? Not under those conditions. Not at all. He wants you to be true to him. It's not that difficult. He, he lets you know who the enemy is. Don't mess around with the enemy. You'll always lose if you do. Stay true to your heavenly father. Those books, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful, uh, but stay gang up on me and there I am at the book. No, uh uh-uh. God is fair. What's in that book? You did it. It's all your baby. Okay. And that's why you sure want to repent when you mess up. Otherwise, it's in the book. And that's the last thing to be open. And what good news that's going to be for some and what sad news for others. You know, the dead, God is not the God of the dead. The dead are those that have not overcome. You're living. You have eternal life. You're in the book and you have rewards there. Not in something negative. It's judgment day. The books are opened and there's your name. One that would never bow a knee to Baal. One that would never be taken in by the false Christ. Because you knew the sequence of openings in the book of the unveiling, the book of Revelation. And you stayed true right to the last minute. It was important to you. It's more important to him. Verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Don't, is it, the works count, my friend. That's the only thing you can take with you because that's what you're judged by. Faith is wonderful. That's what gives you the strength and the ability to follow. But you've got to get into the Word. That's His name. Verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Beloved, that is the death of the soul of those that didn't make it. They're gone. They're erased. They're blotted out. You will never shed a tear for them because you will even... Blotted out means out of your mind. They don't exist. Fifteen to conclude. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, there you have it. The seven openings... Don't forget the first two, and even three. It's the Antichrist. He thought it important enough to put in chapter 6, verse 1, the white horse, that's the fraud. Because he did not want you deceived. He wants you to stand, and above all, stand against sin. To stand against deception. The deception that is coming. Even now, it's knocking on the door. Don't let it in. Because you have been warned from the book of Revelation. The seven things this morning. And the seven openings this evening. God wants us to be warned. He wants us to love him. And you know what? I love you all, too. I do.